exercise that that would be really good for my. <laughs> it's a Chinook going to Windsor. There's probably Kay and William in there or something. Have a great day! <laughs>
I couldn't give birth to a baby in the right way. I ended up having an emergency C-section. I couldn't feed the baby with my boobs, you know? I was like, yeah. oh. And I, there was this point where I was, and my brain seemed to betray me the whole time with the OCD. Yeah. And, and there was this point where I was like, I'm not going to think this way anymore because it hasn't actually served me very well over the years. And I was like, instead of thinking about the things my body can't do, I'm going to think about the things my body can do. And, you know, and that's, that's like such an amazing change. And yeah. even if you do it on a little level, like instead of thinking of all the things you haven't done today, like, oh God, I didn't, you know, I didn't do, I didn't pay that bill or I didn't tell that person this and I didn't, oh, da, da, da. you know, think of, well, what have you done? You got up, you got in the yeah, shower, did you, you took someone to school or you, you know, you've done a bit of, and, and it really does change the way life, you know, feels. Yeah. But I think also, especially for women, for years and years and years, until like maybe five, six, seven years ago, all of exercise was presented as a way to lose weight. Yes, it was yeah, the yeah, only, yeah. it was like a chore that had to be done along yeah. with council tax and sorting out some childcare and saying something important to HR rather than, <laughs> and it's like, you know, you something kind I of, haven't done, to, yeah. done none of those things today. <laughs> but it was just like this, it's like a penance to make you acceptable for everyone yeah, else. Yeah. Whereas for men, sport has been, it's how it's their sold beer or chocolate. It's part of life. Yeah. Whereas women's like, have you been to the gym enough times to be yeah. acceptable yet yeah, this yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. And then it, when when the penny drops, that there's this joyfulness. You're like, oh, I was allowed in all along. Yeah, and it, and it also that's so true. Like the thing about exercise is that you know actually it's not about losses. It's not yeah. about how much you lose. It's about what you gain. The changes you had were much mm. more psychological. Oh my god! Like it has totally. <laughs> seriously, like I didn't know that just putting one foot in front of the other and like. I was going to say moving at speed, but I mean... It's all relative, yeah. <laughs> my version For of us, speed. yeah. <laughs> How much that might change my life. It, that's the thing that people who really run, who aren't just the, you know, short shorts people doing sprints every weekend, who are running as part of their daily existence, are almost always not doing it for their legs or their mm. lungs. It's to keep themselves going in all sorts of ways. Yeah. And... It, it's, I think it's one of the cruelest things about sports marketing and how we're taught sport in school and how it's talked about in a lot of the newspapers that it is for sporty people mm. because there's so much to be gained for all yeah. of us that we need people like you going, <laughs> and you. hello, <laughs> we're, we're in this club too. But we also, found the secret door, come in this way. Because, because also, like, I don't, like, it's really amusing because... I, I still get a bit, because I'm a slow, I'm a really slow runner, and I still get a bit like, oh, do they think I'm not a proper runner? But, you know, that's my problem. That's my, that's my head. Yeah. There's no one else's. But have you had people asking you that since writing I, about it? I get and... a lot of, like, what was your marathon time? And I purposely don't talk about marathon times. Yes. Because for me, it's not about time, and it doesn't matter. No, and it's you know? your time that's relevant to you and your yeah. life and your body. And I think it can be really off-putting to yes. a lot of people, because if they think, well, there's no point if I'm not going to get it done in four and a half hours or five mm. hours you know my first marathon like I will tell you my time because if it makes someone feel better my first marathon took me five hours 53 minutes yeah it's no one else's kind of job to tell you, you know, the point is yeah a lot of people who go what's what always amuses me as well when people go what was your time and I'm like what was your marathon time and they're like oh I've not done a marathon I was like that's it <laughs> Well, exactly. there, well there we go exactly um, but let's talk about the body thing because you don't realise when you're in your kind of hole of I hate running how many different body types are out there running. Mm. You just believe the marketing campaigns yeah, the on the, the, the magazines, yeah. the sports brands, the kind of Instagram advertising yeah. vibe. And it really does take maybe a fortnight of running to see people who look like you again. Did yeah. you have that? Did you feel that sort of solace? Yeah, and I also, I have to say, I remember going to, like, the London Marathon Expo. Yes! To pick up my race number um, just before the um, just before the first London Marathon I did. And I was blown away by the mixture of people. Yeah, and ages as well. Oh, my God. Like, I got overtaken by an 86-year-old man on crutches. <laughs> but I didn't feel like, oh, boo-hoo, poor me. I'm, you know, I was just like, wow, this is so brilliant. There are so many different types and, yeah, and ages and body sizes and... You know, once you get into it, you become quite addicted to it. And for me, as an addict, you know, mm. as someone in 
recovery, it's really good to be able to channel it into something healthy as opposed to something not healthy. Um, how did how did have you found since that kind of escalation of you know understanding how the fitness and running and all the sort of rewards that you get? How have you not let it kind of go too far? Because you sort of talk a bit about you know your obsessive nature yeah. and. And there, there's one. Th- there's only one thing worse than not running, and that's running way too much. Yeah, I don't have that problem. <laughs> you, 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 the <laughs> luckily, <safeguards. laughs> luckily, I uh, luckily I also obsessively really love food and right. sitting and watching Netflix with my husband. You know, I do. I try. I can. I really have to be careful because I can be like, I haven't done enough this week, mm. and then I'm like, no, you've had. You've exercised every day, and um, but I don't. I I don't. Yeah, I don't find that's really a problem. I still find it, in fact, this is the funny thing, is that I still find it a real struggle to get up and go out in the morning. And I yeah. and I have this sort of belief, and I don't know if you agree with me, that like nobody actually ever wants to go for a run. No. Like, I, 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 see, if they say they do, I, I, yeah. I'm happy to listen, but I won't yeah. be believing you. Like there's a guy over there, you know, you have to force, you know, everyone has to, everyone has to force themselves out for a run, right? Yeah. There's this idea, this like, there's this magic moment where you're like, woohoo, let's go! You know, yeah. No, that doesn't happen. And the, fir- and the first 20 minutes are fucking heinous because your whole body's trying to wake up and it's horrible. Um, but what I do know is that I've never regretted going for a run. Yes. So I have to hang on to that and force myself through it. So I still, I still struggle. Like, even though I know this is going to make me feel better, I don't leap out of bed and want to do it, you know. I really have to, like, put myself on autopilot. Yes. You know, and just put my feet in the right direction and just go and then, and then I'll do it. But left to my own devices, I'd lie in bed eating ice cream and yeah. wanking and watching Netflix. Well, I mean, I'm going to embroider that on cushion <laughs> and give it to you. <laughs> I, would, I just like I, that's what I do happily. I mean, maybe I wouldn't be that happy. But so I have to, you know, I have to. Really... I think you would. I think we all would. But if that I was all. A, I feel like, but certainly for my mental health, it's like there are yeah. things I have to do in the same way that a diabetic day would have four to take. of the Netflix wankathon. <laughs> Spirits would be plummeting. Yeah, you'd be red raw. <laughs> And, I, and I, I don't know what I'd be wanking on on Netflix. Oh, maybe <laughs> you'd got, be on to the, just the fireplace they've one. Got all you'd the, have watched everything. They've got all the Avengers movies on there, haven't they? <laughs> they've got four. I'd be all right. They'd keep me going for a couple of days. But anyway, but the, um, but the, the confidence I get from it and the confidence and the, the way my life has changed, just that, for, it's just, it's free. You know? Yeah. We're so often set up to believe that our bodies are not us that they're this alien thing that we're having to cart around with us all day. Yeah. But they're, they are us and we're in charge of them. And when you make that connection, that you're able to kind of have a little bit of agency over what you do and, and your body is yours to enjoy and for it to take you to places, not for other people to appraise. Or use it, or, yeah, yeah, or it's, exploit. Yeah, it's incredibly sort of freeing and that, that you're sort of journey to that comes across in the book like you can see it sort of opening all these doors along the path Mm. and it's you know it's visible now so I think it's also like I feel I don't I don't you know I think when you're exercising when you're moving like it's very difficult actually to be when you're running to be dwelling on shit you know yes like people talk about how it clears their heads and it it does And and I think it also it just there's it just shifts your energy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I promise you, I promise you, if you're watching this at home, like I'm imagining right now that you're in bed, right? Perhaps you're a bit hungover or <laughs> you're depressed or you're, le- you're feeling lethargic and you're watching this on your phone, right? And you want the world to just go away or you don't feel like you're part of the world. You feel other, you feel gross. You feel, I don't know, you're lying in your own sweat and self-loathing, which was what I spent a hell of a lot of my 20s and early 30s doing, by the way still sometimes do and uh, but what I will promise you now saying this is that if you just get up put on some they don't have to be like elite running trainers doesn't have to be elite running gear just get up put on whatever you have go out there download a couch to 5k app on your phone they're free the loads of free ones right and just go just go and do that for like 20 minutes and I promise you you're gonna feel better than you do right now and you may not feel much better. You may not be cured. You may not be whoop-de-woo doing a... Yeah. But slowly, bit by bit, you're getting there. 